Hey everybody, so welcome to the channel. So it's no secret that as of September of this year, the Fed has been reducing short-term interest rates. In September, they had the surprise 50 basis point decrease in the uh, Fed funds rate. And then again, in November, they had a 25 basis point decrease. So a total of 75 basis point decrease since September. And what's happened to the bond market? Interest rates have done nothing but go up since then. So the question that we should all have is, what is the bond market telling us? And what does that mean for the markets in general, but specifically of interest is the stock market. So it's really interesting as the Fed has been decreasing interest rates since September, longer term rates have done nothing but go up which means that the bond market is selling off. So the bond market is telling us something very significant. And you can see that ever since September, the 10 year, for example, has sold off 80 basis points. This is a huge move in the bond market. And it means that bond prices have declined substantially on the long end and there has been a tremendous loss of value in the bond market. Meanwhile, while all this has happened, the stock market, of course, has rallied and there's been nothing short of a melt up in the stock market. So I asked myself, well, okay, so the longer end of the curve is selling off. What's happening to the shorter end of the curve? Surely that must be rallying, right? No, the short end of the curve has followed the long end of the curve almost in lockstep. If you look at the two year, you have an almost exact equivalent 80 basis point increase in rates, which essentially means that the shorter end of the curve is selling off too. So the entire rate curve has gone up in interest rate and therefore bonds have gone down in value. So this has all happened recently this week in a backdrop of the inflation numbers coming in, you know, disappointingly strong, meaning higher. CPI, for example, came in at 2.6%. That was a headline number. But the core is 3.3%. This is very far away from the 2% target that the Fed has been targeting. And, uh, you know, largely inflation coming down, which is really just the rate of inflation has been coming down. Inflation's not coming down, has been the rationale for why the Fed is reducing rates. Then you look at the PPI, which is the producer price index, and you see a similar story. Annually, it's up 2.4. That's the headline number. But when you look at core, it's 3.5% that it's gone up. So the story that the Fed's been spinning here for us is sort of uh, stalling out because it appears that inflation is a little bit more persistent than the Fed had hoped. So taking all of this into consideration, what exactly is the bond market telling us? And I've said before that historically the bond market is always a better predictor of what's going to happen in the economy and in the markets than the stock market because it is highly quantitative and I believe from working on Wall Street that the smartest people in the markets are involved in the bond markets. So it's very important to understand and follow what the bond market is telling us. I think there are five basic takeaways here uh, that we should focus on and here they are. I think it's pretty evident from this that the Fed is behind the curve. And when I say behind the curve, I mean behind the curve on inflation. Uh, the Fed aggressively came in with that 50 basis point reduction in September and then followed up with another 25 basis points in November. But yet it appears that with the strength of the economy and the persistence of inflation in the CPI and the PPI numbers as examples, it seems to me that perhaps the Fed started to ease on rates, probably a little bit prematurely. The second is a related point where I think that uh, the bond market is basically discounting 
the possibility of an inflation resurgence. And I think you're already seeing that in the numbers and uh, it's, it's becoming pretty evident. The third thing is, I think it's a reaction to initially the anticipation that Trump was gonna win the election and then finally the eventuality that Trump did win the election and the associated perception that there'll be increased economic activity, this of course will put pressure on inflation as the economy heats up and as demand increases. And so I think that is another major factor. Fourth, I think there is a reaction to the federal deficit and the overall $35 trillion of debt that the government has outstanding now, which is completely unsustainable. And I think people are beginning to focus on some of Trump's policies as it relates to uh, the deficit and the overall level of debt, since he was not known as uh, a particular uh, fiscal conservative in his first term. Uh, some of his policies, I think, are being viewed by the bond market as potentially inflationary. And then I think finally, uh, a related issue to Trump's policies are his anticipated tax cuts and potentially his spending proposals. And one of his big platforms on which he ran upon was strengthening defense, increasing defense spending. And uh, as we know, under Biden, uh, defense spending in real terms was basically flat his entire four years. Meanwhile, China and everyone else are building up their military at a very rapid pace. So what does all this mean for the stock market? Uh, I think it has a lot of uh, profound implications for the stock market. And uh, look, l let's face it, ever since the election came into focus, uh, there's been a melt up in stocks, uh, which has been good for everyone's 401k, including yours and mine. And uh, I think that has been good. First, it was the anticipation of Trump winning, then the actuality of Trump winning, and the stock market has rallied tremendously as a result of that. And good news was good news, bad news was good news. You know, it didn't matter. Uh, everybody's bullish and the stock market has done really well up until this point. But what does these movements in the bond market portend for the future of the stock market? I think in part the stock market is anticipating just overall increased economic activity with the Trump administration. Uh, his policies are in general pro-growth and I think that uh, the market is, is really looking toward many industries doing better under Trump. Some will not do as well under Trump, but for the most part, most companies uh, view that between his uh, economic policies and his tax policies, that overall uh, economic activity will increase and generally most companies will do better. I think one issue that's really coming into focus is deregulation. Trump is big on deregulation and I think it's important uh, to take a look at what industries might benefit from an increase in deregulation. One is banking. Banking, obviously a highly regulated industry. So any uh, reduction or easing in regulation is going to benefit banking tremendously. Another one is energy, drill baby drill. Okay, we've heard that over and over from Trump. Uh, while I think that the deregulation and the expansion of drilling uh, in all the areas that Biden cut back on or restricted, I think that's all great. But you have to realize, since I am very interested and uh, was heavily invested in energy, I've lightened up since I realized Trump was gonna win. But I think one of the interesting and important things to consider is commodity prices, which is good for the economy, might take a dive if oil goes down to $50 a, a barrel, um, you're going to see uh, declines in all of the oil and gas companies. Um, that's just natural, but it will be very good for inflation. It will be very good for the economy. So keep an eye on energy. Uh, I have reduced my exposure to oil and gas recently, 
but I still think that deregulation will benefit the industry overall. Another one is technology, okay? Uh, reduction in deregulation helps technology. Technology is already a, a very strong industry. It's historically outperformed just about every other asset class in the stock market. And I think that's going to continue. Now, I think another very important factor is deregulation will also increase M&A activity. Now, M&A activity has been curtailed tremendously uh, by the FTC, which is headed up by uh, Lena Khan, who has proven to be one of the worst FTC chairmen probably ever, uh, but certainly in recent memory. Um, she literally gutted the M&A business, and that has a deleterious effect on uh, stock values in certain industries, and uh, it reduces economic activity. And so I think um, a reduction in deregulation and getting rid of these crazy bureaucrats, or I should say I ideologues, because Lena Khan is an ideologue, um, getting rid of these ideologues, um, I think will we'll have a tremendous benefit uh, to uh, the M&A activity and therefore will help the stock market. Uh, one data point with Lena Khan, the most recent, there have been many M&A uh, transactions that she has thwarted or tried to thwart, but the most recent one was Spirit Airlines and Frontier had proposed to merge and she tried to stop it uh, for competitive reasons, which is absolutely ridiculous. So now because of that, uh, Spirit is now in bankruptcy. Good job, Lena. So I think the wind up in all this is that if you wanna understand what the future brings in the markets and particularly the stock market, watch the bond market. The bond market is a much better discounting mechanism, a much better predictor of future activity. And I think this shows that the Fed uh, is behind the curve on inflation in the sense that they started cutting too soon. I think that inflation could come back, maybe not to the extent that we saw um, during uh, B the Biden administration at the peak at 9.1%, but we could see it stay persistently high and we could see interest rates stay higher for a lot longer than most people think. So thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you got value out of it. And I think it would be great for you to watch this video next where there's some more important information for your investing future.